Here's a question for you. How did this... Remember what your pal Bojo always says! Always keep loving! Turn into this. I'm every nightmare you ever had. I am your worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. We're living in a golden age of creepy clowns. From the remake of It to the new season of American Horror Story, homicidal clowns are all over our screens. But when was the shift that turned clowns from children's entertainers into a genuine cultural phobia? The history of clowning dates back to the beginning of storytelling. The history of clowns is a fascinating one uh, because you know all cultures have some version of the clown story. This is Benjamin Radford, who literally wrote the book on scary clowns. You know, the trickster figure. Uh, and of course, the clown is a trickster figure as a Satan. So there's 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 inherently sinister roots. There's always been this ambiguity about the clown character, and this traces back to ancient Rome, for example, in ancient Greece. You had uh, you had clowns that would uh, like throw nuts and and uh, and food at you know, fruits at passersby and make fun of their names and things like that. So there's always been the 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 sort of socially sanctioned role of the clown. As, as sort of this, this dual character. Part of it is the truth teller. So clowns have this role of like saying things that are impolitic or impolite or rude to say. While the trickster archetype has always been present in pop culture, clowns have another layer of uncanniness that makes them even more unnerving. On one hand, it's a person behind the, the mask or you know, underneath you know, playing the role. And yet, you know, they're, they're sort of weird, superhuman unnatural features right you have the the huge eyes the garish colors the 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 out, outlined features the, the the rubber chickens right who carries a rubber chicken so maybe clowns were always inherently scary but their depictions in pop culture often subverted this public opinion, painting them as tragic and misunderstood characters. Like in the famous Leon Cavallo opera, Pagliacci, a story with a prologue that directly tells the audience that clowns have feelings and are real people. Even though the story revolves around a jealous murder and betrayal, the clown characters are distinctly human. Or take a look at the drunken clown from Dickens' first novel. You can go forward to, for example, uh, Charles Dickens, uh, who who was one of the first people to twit to sort of bring in a sort of two-faced version of the clowns in his novel, The Pickwick Papers. Uh, Charles Dickens uh, describes a clown that is happy on the outside and sad on the inside. He would go and do performances, and then he would go home when it's, after the makeup comes off. He's this sad, crippled depressed alcoholic man. Later, in America, clowns would become a staple of rodeos and circuses and children's entertainment in general. Bozo the Clown. I mean, for, for, for generations of Americans, the default clown was Bozo or Ronald McDonald, for that matter. So, uh, so of course, Americans are going to have this sort of sanitized, happy, you know, idea of a clown that there was that was itself artificial. For a long time, this image dominated Western opinion of clowns, especially in prosperous and happy post-war America. But the cultural discord of the late 60s and early 70s in a lot of ways ended the innocence of pop culture with the appearance of more rule-breaking art and general dissatisfaction with the state of entertainment. And around the same time, the image of clowning was hurt drastically by the crimes of John Wayne Gacy a serial killer who often performed at charity events and children's parties as Pogo the Clown. Suddenly, parents had a reason to be distrustful of the stranger in makeup blowing up balloons at their child's birthday party. The problem for the clown's image was only worsened in the late 80s with Stephen King's novel It, with the infamous Pennywise the Clown standing in as the personification for everything from childhood trauma to domestic violence to substance abuse. And of course, there's others. You can look at, you know, Krusty the Clown. Uh, you can look at, you know, Killer Clowns Matter Space. I mean, there's, it, it's hard to find a more evocative pop culture figure than the creepy clown. For Radford, the thing that makes these clowns scary isn't just the depiction of their homicidal tendencies or their antisocial antics. It has more to do with the context in which clowns exist. We love clowns in certain prescribed contexts, social contexts, right? So if a clown is making balloon animals in a backyard party, that's great, that's cool, this is fun, let's all have fun here. 
Where people get creeped out is outside of those contexts. It's the clown knocking on your door at 11 o'clock at night. It's the clown walking around a park, you know, in the dark. It's the clown that is that is not in that box that we demand them to be, to be acceptable. Taking this into consideration, it makes sense why it's such a thrill to see pop culture clowns committing bank robberies or kidnapping children. The thing that scares us is an already unpredictable character placed in an entirely unexpected environment. But maybe the clown as a trope is focused too closely on the frightening and not enough on the emotionally complex. The real feat wouldn't be to scare audiences with a preset archetype, but to build a character that's as unnerving and sinister as Pennywise, as insightful as Shakespeare's fools, and as human as the always relatable Krusty. <laughs> 